final item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 15287 in the name of Linda Fabiani on Marie Curie's Great Daffodil Appeal 30th anniversary. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. I would invite those members who wish to speak in the debate to please press the request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible. And Ms Fabiani, if you are ready, I would call on you to open the debate. You have seven minutes, please, or thereby. Uh, thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Uh, I'm really honoured uh, to again host Marie Curie staff and, and volunteers in our Parliament and to head up the members' debate. It's a particularly special year for Marie Curie as this year marks the 30th anniversary of the Great Daffodil Appeal. It might seem strange to refer to the, the annual Marie Curie Daffodil Appeal as a happy event uh, when one considers the work generally of the charity, but it is. It gives a sense of all working together to help our neighbours, friends and family. And the Yellow Spring Flower, to me, is a mark of an organisation which, from the volunteer, fundraisers and helpers, through the professional and admin staff to the, the medical and nursing staff, an organisation that's determined to provide the best possible care and attention to those living with terminal illness and those who love them. As they state, Every day matters when you're living with a terminal illness and we want to help people make the most of the time that they have. Marie Curie fulfills this in different ways. Person-centred is the technical jargon, but all that it means is the best way possible and with the wishes of the individual always at the forefront. The hospice service has hospices in Glasgow and Edinburgh and they're friendly and welcoming places, whether residential or daycare, and annually, care is provided to more than 1,000 inpatients, as well as many thousand home visits <laughs> and additional day services. The Helper Service is currently in four local authority areas, and that provides emotional and practical support to people living with terminal illnesses and their families and carers. This is through volunteer helpers, and I'm delighted at Marie Curie's plans to roll this out across the rest of Scotland. I think everyone knows about the, the Marie Curie Nursing Service, expert nurses working 24-7 in people's homes right across the country. It's such a vital service, helping people stay at home, surrounded by those they care about most, where they're most comfortable. And the Marie Curie nurses supported over 4,700 people in 31 local authorities across Scotland in 2014-15, providing over 36,000 visits. The Information and Support Service offers the Marie Curie Support Line. Confidential help for anyone who has questions, needs support or just wants to talk. The informative website has expanded to the Marie Curie community, an online forum where experiences can be shared and support given. Again, that inclusive working together in care. Of course, another aspect of the work of Marie Curie is participating in policy formation always constructive and speaking from the broad base of experience. The starting point is that everyone should have the right to palliative care when they need it. And the campaign run by Marie Curie and indeed other voluntary organisations has raised awareness of this issue with successive governments and parliaments, resulting in, I believe, a much greater understanding of the issues and a greater willingness to talk about them. It's Excellent that Marie Curie get involved in this work and it's shown in so many ways in our Parliament. For example, the recent Health and Sport Committee report, we need to talk about palliative care, recognised the work that the voluntary sector has brought forward in this regard. As does the Scottish Government's vision in the Strategic Framework for Action on Palliative and End of Life Care. Because people are living longer with more complex and multiple conditions. More people are dying in hospitals, putting more pressure on acute services. And that investment in palliative care in communities provides that care that people want. And it does have the potential to prevent unnecessary admissions and delayed discharges, and of course, to reduce acute care costs. But that provision of palliative care in communities requires partnership working between health and social care and the voluntary sector. Because the reality is that not everyone living with a terminal illness in Scotland is in fact getting the care and support they need. 
Marie Curie um, reckoned that around 40,000 of the 54,000 people who die each year need some form of palliative care. And that probably around 11,000 people in Scotland miss out on that care that they do need every year. There's also the research that evidences an inequity of access existing in accessing palliative care, especially for those over the age of 85, those that live alone, and those from black, Asian and minority ethnic communities. Deprived communities too, but also those with terminal conditions other than cancer. We can make this better, but we can only do it by partnership working between health and social care services and great use of the voluntary sector. And in fact, as Marie Curie say, palliative care is integrated health and social care if it is done sensitively and properly. Hospital support staff know this. There was a quote given to us by Marie Curie, which I reckon sums up an awful lot of it. In the past, we've had patients fit enough to go home, but by the time the service was available, they weren't. And so they ended up stuck in the hospital until they died. Now, that's not what we want for people we love or indeed anyone in our society. But I do believe that there's much to do, but that the will is there to do it, and that if we all work together, we can make it better. I know that my colleagues have much more to say, presiding officer, and I'll close by referring again to the great Daffodil Appeal, the 30th anniversary. In that 30 years, there's been over £80 million raised across the UK, over 80 local Marie Curie fundraising groups, including a very active one in East Kilbride, which I represent. And in 2015, that funded over 30,000 hours of nursing care and emotional support. So that means in Scotland, there is support for over 7,500 people living with a terminal illness, their carers and their families, because of the work that is done by fundraisers. And it covers the 31 local authorities. Still one to go, but they'll get there. And what that fundraising also does is allows the charity to work in partnership with the NHS boards and local authorities to develop these innovative and integrated services that we know are necessary. So I would like to applaud the work of staff and volunteers across Marie Curie who are working towards their vision of a better life for people and their families living with a terminal illness. And I would encourage as many people as possible in this chamber and outside this chamber to support this year's Great Daffodil Campaign. Thank you. Many thanks. Now Colin Malcolm Chisholm to be followed by David Torrance. Four yeah, minutes to the I congratulate Linda Fanny Fabiani on introducing this uh, motion uh, once again and like her applaud uh, the work of all the volunteers and of course staff who uh, make such an indispensable and invaluable contribution uh, in the care that they uh, provide. In particular I endorse and applaud the great Daffodil Appeal in its uh, 30th year and all over the country. Uh, currently, volunteers and fundraising groups are getting behind the DAF and uh, using the hashtag get behind DAF to raise awareness on social media. They're taking obviously lots of practical actions, whether it's bake sales or quizzes uh, or, or, or dressing up down or, or, or daft uh, for the day. So let's uh, praise them and celebrate their work. But also, of course, there are the, uh, the, the volunteers and the helper support project that uh, Linda Fabiana mentioned, and also the volunteers and indeed the staff who work in the many shops and I was pleased on Make a Difference Day to work uh, uh, for a day in the one uh, at Golden Acre in my uh, constituency. But of course we also uh, celebrate and acknowledge the work of the dedicated and motivated and amazingly caring staff of Marie Curie. There are two great hospices, one of them in Edinburgh and one in Glasgow and I know the one in Edinburgh had 480 admissions last year but of course increasingly uh, Marie Curie is working in the community we're told there were 4,700 patients across Scotland supported in the community last year in Lothian. Uh, there were 4,000
1,152 community nursing visits, 2,237 uh, um, um, uh, clinical nurse specialist uh, visits. And the motion also refers to the collaborative work uh, w w between health boards, local authorities and the third sector. And that, of course, is increasingly important as work is done in the community. And I hope that the new uh, integration uh, joint boards, who now have responsibility for this, will recognise the vital role of the third sector in this work and indeed many other uh, areas uh, of uh, work in the community. The, the, the hallmarks of Marie Curie Care are it's holistic, it's patient-centred, and most importantly, uh, the services respond to the choices of patients. And again, I was pleased to see in relation to Lothian that 95% of patients last year were able to die in their place of choice. Uh, and finally on this, there's the whole issue of the quality of care being central. And I think the fact that many staff are able to participate in the, in the research facilitator scheme is a way of uh, enhancing uh, the quality and ensuring that staff understand even better the needs of patients and the nature of quality care. Now, there are other facets of the work. Linda Fabiana re referred to the uh, information and support service, but also we should acknowledge the contribution of Marie Curie to policy. They've had important reports changing the conversation and triggers for palliative care, and they in particular have highlighted discrepancies in provision. Uh, many different groups, they said, did not uh, access the palliative care that they needed, and I think in particular we found out when we were doing our health committee inquiry onto palliative care that people with a ter terminal illness other than cancer often uh, lost out. So I think it was important that that research fed in to the uh, strategic framework for action that Linda Fabi Annie referred to the government policy document as well as the health committee report. They have also campaigned on benefits. Um, the Scottish Government has committed to fast-tracking benefits for those living with a terminal illness, but I know Marie Curie is also concerned uh, and, uh, that, 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 that the carer's allowance for those caring for people with a terminal illness uh, needs to be fast-tracked as well. I don't think that commitment's been made yet. It's probably difficult for the Health Minister to make it, but I'm sure she will pass that on to the Minister with uh, responsibility. My time's nearly up. Can I apologise for not being able to go to the reception? I have a very important constituent constituency meeting uh, in West Granton with a community centre threatened by closure, but I hope that I will be able to stay to the end of the debate, but perhaps if there are a large number of speakers, uh, this, uh, the presiding officer will forgive me if I leave slightly early. Many thanks. Now call on David Torrance to be followed by Nanette Milne. Thank you, presiding officer. I would like to thank Linda Fabiani for securing this debate in Parliament today, and I appreciate the chance to speak about Marie Curie's Great Daffodil Appeal, which is now in its 30th year and what helps facilitate much of the other good work that is carried out by the organisation. I would also like to welcome the representatives and volunteers from Marie Curie who are in the gallery today. Marie Curie, which has been carrying out work for over 65 years, is a charity like no other. During that time, it has managed to remain cognizant of how it is perceived and what people in Scotland and throughout the UK need from the services it provides. With this in mind, in 2015, saw so it rebrand from Marie Curie Cancer Care to Marie Curie care and support through terminal illness. It supports over 7,400 terminally ill people in Scotland each year through the provision of its services in 31 local authorities in Scotland and the two hospices in Edinburgh and Glasgow. Because of the continued hard work put in by the staff of Marie Curie and the many volunteers who give up their time, I think it is, great, it is of great importance that we take this time today to honour their achievements. Marie Curie is therefore a people living with any terminal illness, whether it is cancer or any other illness, and is also there to help support families of those affected. We offer expert care, guidance and support to help them get the most from the time that they have left. The implementation of the new information and support services, such as Marie Curie Support Line, the Information Hub on the website and the Marie Curie Community Online Forum, is helping them to achieve their goal of raising awareness and maximising the number of people who can access and benefit from the different types of support which are available. Various initiatives take place annually to raise funds, and of course one of the biggest successes for Marie Curie is in helping to raise funds for such services is the annual Great Daffodil Appeal. Last year this appeal raised half a million pounds in Scotland alone and over eight million pounds nationwide. Over the past few years, I've been able to join volunteers in my Kirkcaldy constituency in the Great Daffodil Fundraising Appeal. And I never fail to be impressed by the effort put in organising these collections, 
the dedication and commitment of everyone involved in participating in the Daphne Appeal at different venues in the area is inspiring. I am always equally amazed by the generosity of the public and support we give to Marie Curie. The money raised in Scotland in 2015 funded over 30,000 hours of nursing care. The past two years have seen the formation of a new local Marie Curie fundraising group in Fife. We do so much in help to raise funds, not only through a great daffodil appeal, but in many other events they organise. In my own constituency of Kirkcaldy, a fundraising group which raised over, over £6,000 since formation, recently held a joint event with the local Marie Curie shop, which I attended and I was believe was the first ever held. It was a great success and £1,000 was raised, which provides over 50 hours of Marie Curie nursing. I'm also looking forward to the great tea party and the mass keep fit, se keep fit session they are organising in conjunction with the upcoming Beach Highland Games in Kirkcaldy to raise funds. I might, even be, I might even be convinced to take part. Marie Curie is constantly working to enhance its services in order to deliver the right care and as such encourages involvement for patients and feedback from families about issues surrounding terminal illness, prognosis and dying, bereavement and symptom control. Although Marie Curie will continue the good work it does in supporting these suffering from terminal illness, illnesses, it is no easy task and the service such as those mentioned previously Aligned to the ded dedication and hard work of many volunteers and those who work for Marie Curie is invaluable. President Officer, I have talked about Marie Curie's accomplishments in Scotland, including my local area. However, I want to raise awareness of the work that st is still necessary in order to meet the challenges ahead. The future will bring greater demands with people expected to live longer, with more complex illnesses. 1.2 million people will surpass 90 years of age by 2033. It is important not only to help in relieving pain for those who are terminally ill, but ensuring that they are provided quality end-of-life care and to use Marie Curie's words, deliver the right care in the right place at the right time. Lastly, I want to encourage all fellow Scots to wear a daffodil and sh show support for Marie Curie's invaluable services. Many thanks. Now call on Dr Lynette Milne to be followed by Leah MacArthur. Four minutes, so thereby, please. Thank you, Mr. Presiding Officer. Can I thank Linda Fabiani for tabling this motion, which we discuss on a yearly basis. But, of course, this year is special, as we celebrate Marie Curie's 30th anniversary of its great daffodil appeal. Richard Mead of Marie Curie told my researcher at the Scottish Conservative Party conference last week, where Marie Curie had a stall, that he was disappointed that many members' debates in this parliament are badly attended and supported. I very much share that sentiment, and others in this chamber will no doubt agree. But Richard went on to say that these are actually occasions when we don't have party political point scoring, but demonstrate why we came into public life in the first place. And I think many members agree that these debates are some of the most constructive and thoughtful that take place in this chamber, and this is proving to be one of them. Presenting officer, can I take this opportunity to put on record my thanks to Richard Mead and his team on their showcasing of the work of Marie Curie to MSPs and the wider public. Without a dedicated outfit who understand that cancer is not something that should be ignored or hidden away, Marie Curie is at the forefront of such an important message. Recently, they've been very active in highlighting the importance of palliative care and starting the conversation about it early in a patient's journey through a non-curative health condition, not just cancer, but also long-term progressive conditions like heart failure and COPD. They've long been promoting the need to speak openly about death and dying in an attempt to change the culture in this country, where these hugely important issues are swept under the carpet or ignored completely. And as a, as a highly respected organisation, they tend to be listened to and could have a big impact on changing attitudes to end-of-life issues. I've often said I'm not a huge fan of badges and ribbons to mark different charities and their events, although I would stress that that, that does not mean that I don't support uh, such causes. But there are two whose emblems I do wear. One is Poppy Scotland's red poppy in November, and the other at this time of year is Marie Curie's bright, red, bright yellow daffodil. These simple and easily recognised emblems have a significant impact on people's willingness to contribute to these very worthwhile causes, and many, many people have benefited over the years as a result. I support Marie Curie and proudly wear the daffodil because of the remarkable palliative care they provide to people across the United Kingdom. The northeast of Scotland, which I represent, is, is a region which has seen people cared for in a way I didn't see when I was a young hospital doctor. 
Now we have dedicated Marie Curie nurses going into people's homes who understand the needs of the thousands of people in Scotland who live with a terminal illness and how to support them and their families during such a stressful time, comforting them and often enabling them to gain some enjoyment during their last days and experience the good death to which we would all aspire. Hospices in Edinburgh and Glasgow look after people from all walks of life, of all ages, different backgrounds and of all creeds. Many of us will have seen at first hand the dedication in these hospices to loved ones by staff who not only provide the necessary medical care, but also an understanding of the emotional support that relatives and friends need at end of life situations. In North East Scotland alone, in 2014-15, over 1,600 people benefited from almost 10,000 hours of care from community nurses, and a total of 21 Marie Curie volunteers also supported 54 people <coughs> through their helper service. In NHS Grampian, 85% of Marie Curie patients were able to die in their place of choice, and 90% in Tayside. I think we'd agree that this level of care is remarkable and outstanding. Presiding officer, my researcher tells me that Frank Sinatra had more farewell tours than anyone else in show business, that then he had umpteen comebacks. Now, this is not my final speech, but I can assure members I won't be making any comebacks to this chamber uh, as an MSP. However, one thing which I will be doing is to retain my connection with the cross-party group on cancer, and I'm sure that that will mean my continued support for and involve with, involvement with Marie Curie because it's a charity which demonstrates the very, very best in the voluntary sector. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now I call on Liam MacArthur to be followed by Patricia Ferguson. Hey, thank you, Deputy President Officer. Can I too congratulate uh, my good friend Linda Fabiani on securing this debate? Uh, I'm happy to confirm that I am going to get behind the FAB in getting behind the DAF, uh, as well as allowing us an opportunity to acknowledge the phenomenal work done by Marie Curie nurses, staff and volunteers on behalf of terminally ill people and their families. It enables us, I think, to focus on the challenges they face going forward. A victim of their own success, no doubt, but as Linda Fabiani reminded us, estimates suggest around 11,000 people who need palliative care in Scotland miss out. With annual death rates due to rise by 13% over the next 25 years, the risk is that the numbers missing out on the end-of-life care they need will increase. In that context, it's encouraging that the government's action plan for palliative and end-of-life care envisages that by 2021, everyone who needs palliative care will get it. For this to happen, however, we will need to see greater priority given to this issue by health and care, uh, social care partnerships, as well as from commitments from the incoming Scottish Government after May. And already we're seeing an inequality of access. Marie Curie, in their briefing, point to the difficulties faced by particular groups those over 85, those living alone, ethnic minorities, those from deprived communities. And as Malcolm Chisholm, uh, I think, uh, testified earlier, disparities also exist between those affected by cancer on the one hand and those with other terminal conditions, dementia, motor neuron, heart failure. Sufferers of these conditions all seem to be overrepresented in the numbers of people not accessing end-of-life care. This, in part, I think, may reflect a public perception still that Marie Curie is for people affected by cancer. This, as other speakers have already uh, reminded us, is wrong, and hopefully those perceptions are beginning to change, something I know that local volunteers in Orkney are working hard to achieve. However, there is still some way to go. As well as awareness raising, of course, local volunteers are part of a remarkable fundraising effort uh, on behalf of the charity. The amounts raised in Orkney, I think, have been testimony both to the generosity of the local public but also a recognition of the importance of good quality, widely available, available palliative care. After all, there can be few people in Orkney, or indeed in any community, who don't know of somebody who's been affected. And with a population that is ageing faster than the national average, one that is living longer with more complex conditions, and one that is dispersed over a number of islands and rural parishes, it's clear that the challenges in this area are only likely to increase. The need for funding to meet those challenges is only likely to do the same. That is why I want to pay particular tribute to those who volunteer their time to help raise those funds. Barbara Todd deserves particular mention for her heroic efforts. Barbara is due to step down as the local chair of Marie Curie in uh, Orkney in May, but I know she will remain closely involved and very active. 
A special mention too for Terry Payton, who I hope has been able to make it along to Parliament this evening, and to Linda Lenny, who I am sure has made it along, assuming she's escaped the clutches of Marks and Spencers. It is great to have a strong Orkney presence in the gallery and at the reception later this evening. I would also like to put on record once again my gratitude to Dr Andrew Trevitt and his colleagues for the commitment they have shown in delivering this service in Orkney. This has been a relatively recent development and sadly leaves Shetland, I think, as the only area without such a service. Indeed, when I spoke in the debate last year, only patients in the West Mainland of Orkney were able to access Marie Curie support. I'm delighted to confirm to Parliament this has been expanded to cover all of the Orkney mainland, with three Marie Curie nurses now in place. In time, hopefully, constituents living in the inner and outer aisles may benef benefit uh, similarly. Fairness, I think, demands no less. It is vital that capacity is built and momentum is maintained. This is a service that fits not just with the palliative care strategy I mentioned earlier, but with the clinical strategy too. In that sense, I hope it can become more firmly embedded in the near future through a partnership between health and social care and the voluntary sector. Deputy Presiding Officer, the number of patients in Orkney who have benefited so far is relatively small, but the impact has been significant. Patients and their families are hugely positive about what the support gives them. That, I believe, speaks volumes. So again, can I congratulate Linda Fabiani on allowing us to have this debate and to all the Marie Curie nurses, staff and volunteers, I offer my sincere thanks for the exceptional work you do, allowing people to die with the dignity and in the place of their choice. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now I call on Patricia Ferguson, to, after which move the closing speech from the Minister. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And can I add my congratulations to my colleague Linda Fabiani for securing this annual debate. I always feel very honoured and quite humbled because the Marie Curie Glasgow Hospice is based in my constituency and I have had the opportunity to visit it on a, a great many occasions. And it is one of those places that you always leave feeling much better than you did when you entered its doors because there is such a feeling of calm, of joy, of peace and of enthusiasm for the work that is done there. And I would pay my own tribute to all of the staff of Marie Curie who helped to make that atmosphere and that ethos so obvious to everyone who enters within it. Uh, as we know, we're celebrating the Great Daffodil Appeal uh, in its 30th year. And it is worth just thinking back about the amount of effort and the amount of enthusiasm and initiative that went into establishing that wonderful idea in the first place. And we know too that uh, one of the great things about Marie Curie is that it has allowed so many people to be able to leave this world in the manner of their choosing. But I wanted to speak a little bit about those who remain behind. In 1992, a young man called Alan Young uh, was bereaved. His mother unfortunately died. Alan was still at school at the time when his mum, Margot, passed away. Margot had been a patient at the Marie Curie Hospice in Glasgow prior to her death. And as an adult, Alan Young established a foundation in his mother's memory, the Margot Young Foundation. And it creates events and organises events too to raise money to go towards the work of the Marie Curie Hospices. Last year, for example, they organised a 99-hole golf event. Uh, I still find it quite difficult to get my head around how this worked, but I understand that the golfers set out at 3.30 a.m. in order to play 99 holes over five and a half courses, so I'm told, and completed by 9 p.m., raising in the process a great deal of money for the Marie Curie Hospice. And what Marie Curie has done with that money in conjunction or in conversation rather with the Margaret Young Foundation is to set up a child bereavement project to recognise that there are children who are bereaved at a very early age of their parents or of another sibling or a loved one and who perhaps find it difficult to deal with the consequences of that. 
And I think that's a very fitting memorial, if you like, to Margot Young and all praise to Alan and everyone who works with him to raise the money that makes all of that possible. But of course, it is the fundraising efforts of volunteers in the main that makes all of the work of Marie Curie possible. And again, I am fortunate to have two shops in my constituency, one in Springburn and one in Mary Hill, both of which are extremely popular locally and which raise a great deal of money for the charity. And again, the work of volunteers is second to, to none, in my view, uh, in connection with Marie Curie, and long may that continue. But I did just want to say a little bit about the disparity that we've heard about this evening about the palliative care. And I, I think in last year's debate, I, I perhaps majored on that particular issue. And I think it's incumbent, incumbent upon every one of us with an interest in Marie Curie and the work that it does to help by raising our voices and by using all the opportunities that we have to explain to the wider communities that we work in and operate in that Marie Curie hospices and palliative care are not just for cancer sufferers, that they are for anyone with a life-limiting condition. And if we can do one thing ourselves, it may be that we use our websites, our opportunities of speaking to groups of individuals and communities around our constituencies to make that point clear. I think if we were able to do that, we'd be helping not just Marie Curie, but everyone who could benefit from those services. Thanks so much. Now, I invite the Minister Maureen Watt to close the debate on behalf of the Government. <coughs> Seven minutes or thereby, please, Minister. Uh, thank you very much, Presiding Officer. And can I also thank Linda Fabiani for again leading a debate on Marie Curie's Great Daffodil Appeal. As has been said, this year marks the 30th anniversary of the Great Daffodil Appeal. Marie Curie's staff and volunteers must be really proud of an appeal that started 30 years ago and is still going strong. And I'd like to acknowledge and give a special thanks to all the people across Scotland for the donations over the years to the Great Daffodil Appeal in helping to make this such a success. I'd also like to commend the hard work of the many dedicated volunteers across Scotland, some who have made it to Parliament this evening, who support this appeal, and for the many other fundraising events each year which are organised. Every month, around 80 groups around Scotland raise funds for this appeal. The success of their staff and volunteers in getting us to don ridiculous, ridiculous hats, tabards and the likes is legendary, but all very worthwhile. And if somebody can get David Cor Torrance to take part in a keep fit session, I hope somebody has a camera to hand. <laughs> the need... <laughs> Presiding officer, the need for a clear vision on the future of palliative and end-of-life care in Scotland is widely shared by the Scottish Government, NHS boards and all of those committed to the delivery of high-quality end-of-life and palliative care. That's why the Scottish Government published the Strategic Framework for Action on Palliative and End-of-Life Care last December. The framework sets out a simple vision for the next five years that by 2020, 2021, everyone in Scotland who needs palliative care will have access to it. And the Strategic Framework for Action aims to ensure that access to palliative care is available to all who can benefit from it, regardless of age, gender, diagnosis, social group or location. And I think it was important that a number of members highlighted that. Within the Strategic Framework for Action, are the government's 10 commitments which support improvement in the delivery of palliative and end-of-life care. These address issues from our reluctance to talk about death through the commissioning of integrated services to the capture and use of data that will tell us where we've got to and what we still need to do. There are several challenges which need to be addressed if we are to make headway towards ensuring access to palliative and end-of-life care is available to all who can benefit from it. To understand the care needs of the people of Scotland, we must continue to listen to what they have to say. We know they have told us that they want to plan care which support them in identifying their preferences at every stage in their care, 
including when time becomes shorter, whether that be in hospital, in a hospice or at home. That's why collaborative care planning, including anticipatory care planning, is now central to health and care in Scotland. And Linda Fabiani herself mentioned pol policy collaboration and Marie Curie is involved in this. It's absolutely vitally important that we learn uh, from those carrying out this vital work, which includes Marie Curie and other third sector organisations. Scotland needs a trained workforce to deliver palliative and end of life care so that informal carers, family members and volunteers can have the support, education and guidance they need. And we know Marie Curious is excellent at this. Training and education will be key to the implementation of the framework. NHS Education Scotland are recruiting three regional practice education coordinators to work across the NHS and social care services to support this work. A new short life working group is being established to produce guidance to support health and social care partnerships with the development of their strategic commissioning plans around palliative and end of life services. And by summer of this year, the 10 commitments will have informed and be reflected in implementation and improvement plans. We need services that are coordinated so that the people of Scotland have access to the highest standards of care in the right place and at the right time. The legislative changes that are being introduced with the integration of health and social care will improve people's quality of life and improve the effectiveness of the whole NHS and the social care system. We can only achieve improvements through working with all the people that matter and are committed to make this care a reality. Marie Curie has a wealth of experience in palliative and end of life care, and we value the work they do in providing person-centered, safe and effective care to the people and their families in the final stages of their lives. And it was important too that David Torrance and Patricia Ferguson mentioned the support for families and particularly the child uh, bereavement programme that Patricia Ferguson mentioned. Looking ahead, presiding officer, I've no doubt this year's Great Daffodil Appeal will be a great success and Marie Curie will continue to work with us in partnership in delivering the same high standards of palliative and end of life care to people all over Scotland. And I encourage fellow MSPs, if they've not already done so, to stop by the Marie Curie stall and speak to Richard and his colleagues. Everyone in the chamber today will agree enabling people to die well and supporting those that love them is something that is worth doing and worth doing well. And every day, Marie Curie are leading the way in this. Many thanks. I now close this meeting of Parliament.